Hi, welcome to Healthy Little Tots by Stacy De Silva. Um, welcome into my home. Typically, we're in my little oasis outside, but I thought, uh, you know, it's a little bit hot here in Arizona today. Kind of hitting the 90s. I think I'm going to stay inside. So, I wanted to talk today about a little bit of, um, I know the whole journey in general there's, it's full of surprises. There's things that I am never going to foresee or predict in the future. Um, today, I was supposed to do my first insemination. It fell through, which is completely okay because I know that there's a reason for it. Something deep in my heart knows that there's a reason for it. And so next month, we're shooting for it and crossing my fingers that all goes smoothly. But, like I mentioned, there's times when things don't go to plan, and I kind of learned this at the lawyer's appointment. So this is why I wanted to talk to you today, to bring up a couple of things that are like, oh, hmm, that the lawyer mentioned that we didn't think of. First of all, one thing, I'm going to have my little paper here, is um, disability insurance. So let's say your surrogate is doing fine, doing fine, and after the birth, something goes terribly wrong, or there's a cesarean, and she has to go on to disability forever, or for years, and what do you do in that situation? Um, you don't want this whole back and forth war after the whole surrogacy journey has finished, the baby's born, the baby's in your arms, so it's best to talk about different things like disability insurance. My surrogate and I and her husband and my husband all sat down at dinner and we discussed it and we opted not to do disabilities insurance. But we did, however, discuss um, term, life, term life insurance. So we know that, let's say God forbid, another thing you don't want to talk about she passes away after birth or in the middle of birth something goes terribly wrong and the surrogate passes away she has a whole family and just knowing that it's because of the journey that she went through and the baby she's providing us with you know that can really cause a lot of issues and lawyers and complication later down the road so we talked to them and we came up with this brilliant plan that they were going to get life insurance anyways because they have a family and that we were going to pay 10 and a half months of the um, term life insurance. So it would be the pregnancy plus six weeks of recovery afterwards, which I thought was extremely fair and I thought it was such a great idea. So we added that to our contract. Another thing, what about abortion? If your child is severely disabled and you figure that out while before the baby's born or there's the any risk or anything when do you draw that line when are you okay and when are you not okay with abortion obviously if the surrogate's life's at risk it makes sense that you would go through with the abortion but what about you know what if there's a disability or something that you find out are you and the surrogate okay with it my surrogate in the beginning was like, you know, I don't know if I could do abortion until we sat and we really talked about it and we were like, you know what, if that baby's life is going to be put in a situation where it cannot function at all on its own, that's not a quality of life worth living. So we may have do that. Or maybe we discuss, hey, you know, we're just completely against abortion altogether. Like, if there's a disability, we handle that on our own. So you guys have to think about those two scenarios and what you would do. Another thing, bed rest. What if after the pregnancy or during the pregnancy, the last three months, she's on bed rest and she cannot work? Are you going to pay what she earns every month? We decided we would pay what she earns every month, which is something, you know, we never thought about paying for. But we have to keep it in mind, keep it in our budget. Are you guys okay with genetic testing? I mean, do you want the amn amniocentesis? Do you want that? I've done research, and I'm not an expert by any means, but I hear that it increases chance of miscarriage. Do you think it's worth it? Discuss that. It's important to be open. And also, um, 
escrow. You know, how are you going to pay them? We came up with the idea of using um, the square for things like the ovulation kit. She'll send me over something. I charge it. It goes right into her account, and, like, she could pick up the ovulation kit that day, so it's instant. But they're going to create a savings account, and we are going to put in the sum. We decided by the due date, all the money will be there, and they can't take it out till after the due date. Just come to terms and figure out what works best for you. But these are all super, super important things that you should sit and discuss. And the mega, mega important one is involvement. I want my surrogate to be involved with our lives. Not to make the decisions for how I raise my child, of course. But I would like her to have mommy and me dates with her kids and my kids. And I would like for Easter we go and... Um, look for Easter egg hunts at the park at the little events that they host in the valley um, together. I want that involvement. I want my surrogate to be there to do the gender reveal with us. So all these things are super important to discuss with a legal contract or without a legal contract. I suggest you write it out so later if there's any like conflicting like what did we say, what did we discuss, you have something to go back to, and you have that good faith agreement, which is super important to have. I hope I gave you a couple of suggestions or a couple of things to really think about. And if you have any more questions, reach out to me. I'll post a couple more mm, situations that you may want to discuss with your spouse before going ahead with surrogacy. Much love. Bye, guys.